A while ago, uh, somebody on my social media suggested that I should do a frequently asked questions type of video. And I thought it was a good idea, so I made a post on my social media where I asked you to uh, post on the comments any types of questions and then I would collect all those questions and try um, to make a video about it and give you uh, some info. So here we are. Um, I'm going to be reading from my phone a bunch of questions combined from my Instagram, Facebook and YouTube channels and pages and hopefully uh, that'll cover some of your uh, FAQ. Here we go. Firing official fan page is asking if you could close your eyes and imagine yourself after five or ten years, do you believe that you will have a family with children included? Thanks. Uh, well, I'm already married. I've been married for about eight years. No kids yet, but uh, hopefully soon on the way. My name is Baha is asking. Notice that you're actually left-handed, but you play right-handed guitar. How does that work for you? Uh, yes, I am left-handed. Since I was a kid, I remember when I picked up the guitar, I played uh, the right-handed way, whatever that means. The left hand was doing all the fretboard movement, so I thought that's the way it should be. Um, maybe I'm um, what you call ambidextrous. I'm not quite sure. And the second question. America surely offer more opportunities to progress in your career. Why do you still live in Greece? Thanks. That's a very good question, uh, my friend. Um, I have spent a lot of time in America in the past and I still try to do one tour every year and I go there on business trips all the time. However, I decided a long time ago because my lifestyle is basically on the road, I decided where do I want to be when uh, I am uh, away from touring, when I'm not touring. And the question was back home in Greece, I felt that uh, there's a different, there's a better quality of life there for me and my family. Sure, there's more business opportunities probably in America. I realize that. Um, so I never close the door. Maybe someday I, I will find my way back there. Uh, but for now, I enjoy living in Greece. Okay, Headbanger Augie says, your, what's your biggest inspirations, your favorite bands and type of music? Heavy metal is my favorite type of music and hard rock and classic rock, uh, biggest inspirations, lots of people, man. Black Sabbath, uh, Scorpions, Maiden, all the classic bands, Priest, all that stuff, all that great stuff. Next one, Fader Mark says, who's your idol? Who did you admire the most when you were a kid? Actually, my idols haven't changed much since I was a kid. Uh, it was always people like Tony Iommi, Rudolf Schenker, People like that, that had um, a lot of focus and put a lot of hard, hard work into what they did and made uh, some of my favorite songs ever. So I look up to these people. Stephanie Marianne Davies says, Hey, I'm a cat person, as are you. What is your favorite breed of cat? Um, hard to say. I, I love all cats. I used to be a huge fan of only Siamese because of my first cat was a Siamese, a royal Siamese. But now I have three cats and they're all different breeds and I love them all. Miguel Ramirez too says, what's your actual birth name? Not many people can say that, but my full name is Costandinos Karamitrudis. And good luck with that. Thomas Mel says, tips on how to deal with record label deals if you're now getting into the music business. If you are now getting into the music business and uh, if you're uh, like a newcomer artist, band, whatever, um, I think things have changed since the time when I was getting into the music business. Uh, I remember back in the day I would send envelopes with my demos uh, to labels and usually would get, a few weeks later I would get like some um, something in the mail which it was called like the rejection letter which was just like a a formal letter from companies say, oh, thank you for your submissions, but um, we're not interested. Or if somebody wanted in interested, they would give you a call or send you a letter saying, oh, please submit more material. Uh, these days, I'm not sure how it works. I think you can still contact labels. Obviously, through the internet is much uh, easier these days. You don't have to uh, send snail mail. Obviously, with the internet, there's a big technological revolution. You can just put up your music on all different social platforms and um, and see if uh, you get any traction and of course approach labels. Uh, Dominic Ariola says, how many cats do you have? Any other pets? I have three cats, Valentino, Marquise and Leon. 
and they're all awesome. <laughs> Sam says, what shampoo and conditioner? Great question, Sam. Thank you. I use um, uh, a shampoo. It's actually a, a product coming out of Greece. It's called Propoline. Um, uh, it's for a dry scalp and it keeps my hair nice and uh, fluffy <laughs> and fresh. <laughs> conditioner wise, actually, I'm not so sure because my wife buys that and I use whatever she brings at home. So, yeah. Brother Bob is asking, what made you switch from ESP to Jackson and what is your favorite thing about Jackson that ESP didn't have? Okay, so let me go on record saying this. Both brands are awesome. I love ESP, I love Jackson. I still have all my uh, old ESP custom shops. Uh, I was just looking for a, a change. The people of Jackson approached me. I actually, I knew the A&R. He was a good friend of mine for many years. Uh, at some point, they offered to make me a um, custom shop guitar just to have it. Uh, I A-B'd the guitar. I thought the, the Jackson was had a little bit of uh, thicker tone that I was looking for at the time. I loved the way the guitar felt. Uh, and then, of course, uh, they had the right mindset and uh, they came with the right proposal um, uh, for how they were planning on marketing um, a possible signature model. And, you know, sometimes it's just a chemistry between people as well as the instrument as well. Um, so, uh, but, you know, just so you know, there's no hard feelings. I have a lot of respect. And actually, all the brands out there, um, they're great brands, you know. So, very diplomatic answer, I know. Valley 42 Ioana says, How can you handle being on tour all the time? Don't you get tired? Of course, traveling all the time uh, with a suitcase in hand and checking into a different hotel every day. It can become tiring sometimes, but I actually love traveling. I love this type of lifestyle. Of course, I love being at home, uh, but um, it, this is what I've been doing since uh, I was uh, in my early 20s. So I really cannot imagine myself doing um, anything else and I really cannot imagine myself not being out there and playing for the fans. So this is it. Christina S6 says, Gus, if you could only go to one place to live for the rest of your life, where would you go except Greece? If I would probably go to another place, I'd probably go somewhere warm and maybe somewhere in America, probably somewhere in California. I like the climate out there. Um, and I have a lot of friends out there, of course, so maybe, yeah, that's where it would be. Guitar Man Cam. Okay, this guy, Cameron Cooper, he says, Who's inspiring you musically at the moment? Is there anyone in particular you'd like to collaborate with? All the best, Cam. I think the guys that I draw inspiration from are more or less the same guys that I grew up listening to. You know, guitar players, again, like I said, Iomi, Ingve, um, or Gary Moore, Uli Roth, Schenker, those guys. There's a lot of great, great players out there at the moment too. Um, and they're, they're inspiring me, of course. Guys like um, um, Angel Vivaldi or Andy James or um, Richie Faulkner is great from Priest. I can't remember a lot of names right now, but um, you get the point. There's a new breed of excellent players out there that are carrying the torch and I'm actually learning from them too. Okay, Kyle Norbutt, that's a great name. Is hot dog a sandwich? I don't know, is it? Saxon fan 747 says, do you like Saxon? Fuck yeah, I love Saxon, they're a great band. Risen Bisson says, will there ever be another run of your signature amp with Blackstar or something similar? Good question. Um, we've been talking about this type of project for a while with the guys from Blackstar. Actually, I have some ideas about doing maybe a more scaled down uh, Blackfire type of amp. Uh, something that's not as heavy to carry around. Let's see if that happens. Gus Cuevas? Gus Cuevas or something? Yeah. What do you think about Floyd Rose tremolos and don't you, you, and don't you use them? I actually do not use Floyd Rose. I don't really, I'm not really a big fan of um, uh, locking tremolo systems. I personally get a better feel and a better grip of the guitar with a stop tail bridge, a standard bridge. I also, um, you know, you also don't have that fear of breaking a string on stage and the guitar just going completely out of tune. And I feel I get more sustain out of a, sta a stop tail bridge. So I hope that answers the question. Your chick for sale. Okay, he says, um, what would you have done different if you could go back in time? I don't think I would have changed anything, to be honest. I'm happy with all the choices I made, even though some of them were the wrong ones, because I think 
you learn from your mistakes. All right, guys, there were actually a lot of lot of questions that I still haven't answered. And that's just from Instagram. There's stuff uh, I haven't even uh, went on Facebook or YouTube yet. I think we need to continue this maybe on a second segment, second part. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching and thanks for all the questions. See ya.